Good morning. morning. Welcome to service here at Plymouth United Church of Christ. Welcome to those who are here for a special Palm Sunday service in the sanctuary, those who are joining us on live stream on Facebook and YouTube. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here to discover meaning in life, to grow in relationship with God, and to serve neighbors near and far. We here at Plymouth are an intentional congregation, intentionally open and affirming of the LGBTQIA plus community, intentionally inclusive in sharing the life and teachings of Jesus as a healing manifestation of God's love and presence in the world, intentionally a just peace church fighting for peace and against violence here in our community and around the world, intentionally immigrant welcoming and with an intentionally accessible building, we affirm diversity and the human spirit in all of its forms. And towards the spirit of truth and reconciliation, we also acknowledge that Plymouth United Church of Christ is and has been on land whose indigenous caretakers are the Menominee, Potawatomi, and Ho-Chunk people. We welcome our guests and friends and partners in the Matilda Ward Youth Empowerment Association. They'll be having their special brunch after service today. And today on Palm Sunday, today, we start with some words from Daniel Cantor. Today we begin the walk to Jerusalem, the Holy Week, the demand that we face the broken path, the abuse of power. Today we walk towards the day spring, breaking through that Easter day of joy. So let us prepare the way. Let us join together this morning in worship to see what holiness resides within and about us, to welcome in the day and make straight the path for the work of God. Let us worship together. Please join me in the call to worship. We come to prepare for the holiest of weeks. We will journey through praise, joy on our lips. We will travel through betrayal and death, praying hope deep in our hearts. Jesus leads us through this week, and we will follow, for he is the life we long for. He is the word who sustains us. Setting aside all power, glory, and might, he comes, modeling humility and obedience for all of us. As we rise for our hymn, Hosanna, Lord Hosanna, number 213, let me just say that we pray that you may enjoy the favor and blessings of God throughout your life. May the colors of spring enchant your heart and the angels guide you towards eternal light. I wish you a delightful Palm Sunday.
Good morning, Plymouth members and friends. Uh, we wave our palm branches, Hosanna in the highest. It's that time for our prayer, and we greet those also who are watching us on live stream this morning as well. So this morning, we lift up our uh, joys and concerns. Are there people and, that we should lift up this morning in our prayers? This joys or concerns? Yes. It's a prayer for, for Chris, who's trying to beat cancer. It's a hard, hard feat. Yes. Uh, a prayer for, for, um, for Andy, who had um, major abdominal surgery. So our prayers are with him. Anybody else? Joys your concerns? Yes, Heather. Prayers for the family of Helen Dixon, who suffered a stroke. Anybody else that we lift up? Yes. A prayer for my husband, Mark. Wait one second. He had a routine blood test that really suggests cancer. So prayers for uh, Jenny's husband, um, who had a routine exam that suggests that he has cancer. So our prayers are with him and um, Jenny today um, going forth. Yes, I'm going to get the Debbie. I think she had her hand up. Yeah. So prayers for Jim and Emily Albert. Anybody else? Yes. Um, prayers for Jack, who started a new residential program. Wonderful. <laughs> prayers for yeah. So prayers for Jack, who started a new residential program. Let's see here. Yes. Okay. Uh, prayers for. I think you said Lynn's niece who has a, a recurrence of thyroid cancer. Yes. Oh my. First for Charlotte and Michael who are battling cancer together. Yes, Leah. Prayers for peace. Amen. Anybody else? Yes. Prayers for those who are struggling with employment, employment struggles. Anybody else? That we are thinking of, yes. Okay. Prayers for France, um, um, granddaughter who moved from Arizona to Chicago and struggling in her new home tra transition. Yes, Elaine. Uh, prayers for my Okay, so purse for your uh, your brother's widow. Okay, and then is struggling with that loss. So anybody else? Yes. So you said say it again. I'm sorry. Alex and Barb. Alex and Barb. Yes, we pray for Alex and Barb Hill. Um, anybody else that we lift up to concerns today? And then we want to just celebrate. Uh, Eva, can you come up for a second, please? Okay, we'll give you a sec. We want to congratulate Eva, who came in third place yesterday at the Special Olympics. Thank you. Give her a round of applause. So we're so grateful for you. All right, let us pray. That was good. <laughs> Creator God, we thank you for the joys in our lives. And God, we thank you also for some of the struggles that we go through. In this room today, there are many that called out names of people who are, who are battling, who are living with cancer and chronic illnesses and trying to figure out, can they make it from day to day? That God, we know that you hear our prayers, that you walk beside us, that God, sometimes that the road seems sometimes weary and maybe alone, but God, allow us to know that we are not alone, that you are with us in our struggles. We pray for those who are experiencing transitions, be it that they move from a new place or maybe transitions of life or the ways in which they are able to operate in the world, that we, God, that you be with them. A God, a bless our hands and our feet, that God, that we might help those in need, be able to help our neighbors pick up the phone, be able to extend and help at hand. 
We thank you, God, for the ways in which you love us. We pray this day, God, for our country. We pray for peace. We pray for places where there is violence so much in the world, and sometimes we feel weary, we won't want to throw up our hands. But God, that we believe the promises that you get, you say declared over us, that we believe that there is peace, that it is tangible. We pray for those in the Ukraine. We pray for those in Russia. We pray for those in Israel. We pray for those in Palestine. We pray for those here in the city of Milwaukee, in our towns and villages. We pray for those even in our own homes. We pray for places where there needs to be reconciliation, that we might walk in peace, that we might operate in a spirit of peace and operate as people and disciples of you, always reflecting a God who still loves and cares for us. But more importantly, Allow us to be grateful for the blessings that we have right in front of us. We thank you for all the things that you do for us. And now we pray the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right. And so our concerns were coming like we're doing things a little different today. But as we celebrate, this is a holy week. As we celebrate our way as Jesus' journey to the cross, and, and we celebrate what will happen on Easter Sunday. We are reminded that today we have, there's a lot going on. There is, a, we're going to make some crosses with our palms. If you've ever decided that you'd like to make some, learn how to fold those cro the palms that we have here into crosses, they will be in the upper study and there will be coffee available. But then we also have a Matilda Ward brunch and award ceremony will be in our lower, uh, in our reception hall from 1030 to 12. All are welcome. There's a suggested donation of $10 and $5 for children. Reminder that Sarah Circle is also meeting at 7 to this evening at the home of Ellen Blank. Um, we have Faith Circle, Loops of Love. Um, reminding of on Thursday is our Monday, Thursday. We're having a simple dinner um, in the upper study. And then we'll have our Monday, Thursday service in, um, it will be in Graham Chapel, won't be in the sanctuary. And then on Good Friday, we will have reflection stations from 1 to 8 here in the sanctuary. So you get to experience the life as we walk our way through the life of Jesus on this Holy Week. And then um, there's a Plymouth uh, men's breakfast on Saturday. And then on Sunday, Easter Sunday service, we will have... I'm sorry, she's a cheerleader. I don't even pay her for that. But 8 a.m. worship service, we have, we will meet at the North Point Lighthouse um, where we will have a sunrise at worship service. And then we'll have Easter breakfast from 8.15 to 9.15. And then at 9.30, we will celebrate in all of its fanfare our Easter sunrise, I mean, Easter uh, worship here in this, in this place. So those are all our announcements. I'll have such in the come at this time. Thank you, Pastor. Uh, we just want to acknowledge that uh, not only is this Easter season, but it is election season, and we are proud to be uh, engaged in our democracy. Uh, the spring election is a week from Tuesday, and we're graced today with the presence of a number of candidates. Uh, I just ask you to, to stand uh, when I uh, recognize you. Uh, we have um, Representative Marissa Bell Cabrera, who's running for Milwaukee County Judge. If you could please stand. Uh, we have County Supervisor Liz Sumner, who's running. Okay, we'll, we'll clap for each of them in turn. <laughs> county Supervisor Liz Sumner is running for County Comptroller. Um, we are shortly to be joined by Representative Evan Goyke, who's running for City Attorney, uh, and he'll be here for the brunch today. Um, and our very own Amanda Davis, everybody knows Amanda, is running for uh, Alder Person in Brookfield. I think she's upstairs with the kids. So good luck to all the candidates, and thank you for joining us this morning.
this time we will um, take our offering, um, and, at, and during the offering time, would you please fill out the red pew pass to let us know that you ha are here this morning. If you're watching us on live stream, you may fill out the, the form to let us know that you're watching us here this morning. The offering will now be given and received at this time. let's read our prayer of dedication. O God of welcome and waving palms, as your crowd offer to you their praise and the palms on the road, how we share these gifts out of the abundance you have provided. May they be for the healing, salvation, and work of justice you are bringing about in the world through your unending love. Amen and amen. Before we begin today's cantata, I just want to first express my thanks to all the people in the Chancel Choir who put in some extra hours to put together this cantata for you during this also busy season in other ways. And since it won't work to have any applause during the cantata for them, I would just ask that you show them a little love right now, if you could. <laughs> I, I also want to add to your prayer list some prayers for Larry Le Wheelock. His husband, Roger, posted on Facebook this weekend that Larry is out of the hospital and home, but the test did show that he may have suffered a small stroke. Uh, and he is suffering with some short-term memory loss, and they're looking for, I believe, some short-term uh, home health care for him. So do keep Larry Wheelock in your prayers. And lastly, uh, uh, prayers for Michelle Gurn, who was to be our Judas this morning, but uh, uh, God stuck, struck Judas down with COVID on Friday, and uh, a, a prayer of appreciation for Joe Gallo, who agreed on short notice to come in and take the role of Judas for our cantatas. So thank you very much.
Jerusalem echoed in song and with shouts of Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. For the followers of Jesus, this was truly a day of celebration as their king triumphantly rode into town on a donkey's colt, accompanied by jubilant praise. Hiding in the shadows of those same streets, however, skeptics and ruthless religious leaders gathered sowing seeds of hate and doubt as they plotted to bring an end to this humble teacher's influence. Surely these evil schemers could find an ally among those close to the so-called Messiah. After all, anyone can be bought if the payment is adequate. And so the plan was hatched, a plan that would ultimately mean securing the aid of a willing disciple, one who would betray Jesus for a few pieces of silver.
disciples had come to Jerusalem to celebrate the Jewish Passover. As they gathered to share the Passover meal, Jesus told them of difficult days yet to come. He told them of betrayal and that he would soon be leaving them. And then he took the bread, broke it, and gave it to them. This is my body given to you. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. Do this in remembrance of me. My friends, I have longed for this moment and this Passover meal we can share. But in a short while I must leave you and no one can follow me there. So take this bread this is my body take this wine this is my bread shed for forgiveness to set captives free do this in remembrance of me After the meal, Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. The burden of grief was overwhelming as Jesus anticipated the events which were to come and all that his followers would soon experience. He poured out his heart in anguish. Abba, Father, if it is possible, take this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done.
the solitude of the remote garden was suddenly shattered when an angry mob led by Judas arrived, armed with swords and clubs. They seized Jesus, arresting him and taking him to Caiaphas, the high priest, and the teachers of the law. And in a, in a night marked by betrayal, false accusations, and a mock trial, Jesus was sentenced to a criminal's death, crucifixion on a cross. In one final act of love, Jesus offered no resistance as he was handed over to the very people he had come to save. Jesus was led to Golgotha, where he was nailed to a cross between two criminals. As witnesses mocked him, a company of soldiers divided up his clothes in a final act of humiliation. Darkness came over the whole land as the sun stopped shining and the curtain of the temple was torn in two. Calling out in a loud voice, Jesus said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And then he died on the cross.
choir applause. That was beautiful. That was excellent. Good job. Also, thank you, Donna, for your leadership. Very great. And now our benediction. It says, people of God, raise your branches high. Sing with shouts of joy. For Jesus has not only entered the city of Jerusalem, but into the hearts of those who are willing to walk in his ways. Go forth not in fear, but in the courage and hope of God our creator, Jesus our brother, and the Holy Spirit our liberator. Amen. Thank you.